All right, guys, uh, this is going to be a full in-depth review of the new Hercules Harbor Freight uh, deep cut variable bandsaw. I've been using the Hercules stuff in my welding business now for a while. And I know a lot of people go, oh, you need the wall, Milwaukee, blah, 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 blah. You know, these things are junk. They're cordless tools from China or from Harbor Freight, whatever you want to say. That's fine. But you know what? At the end of the day, uh, the only reason I actually went with them, one, it's just to start in business. I don't, I didn't want to take out a loan. I didn't want to do anything like that. Everything I've ever bought for this business has been out of pocket. So I don't have any overhead and I can actually keep my prices lower and I can, it, it's easier for me. Uh, but the big reason, let's get this out of the way, is right here at the bottom, and it's going to be kind of hard to see, so I'm going to walk you in there, is a five-year warranty on the tool and they have three on the batteries. So... That competes right along with Milwaukee. Uh, in my day job, I work as a ag equipment mechanic, and I use nothing but Milwaukee, and I will always tell Milwaukee is the best cordless tool manufacturer, especially if you're going to be a mechanic. I, I, I can't fault that. I really can't. I can't counterdict myself on it. They make a hell of a you know battery-powered tool. Always have. They even make good grinders. A lot of my grinders are from Milwaukee, like my corded ones. Um, but I did need some cordless stuff. And I just didn't want to upfront the cost of Milwaukee. And I have been just overly impressed with the stuff I've gotten from Harbor Freight. I've got a, you know, a couple drills, a angle grinder. I am maybe in all the tools less than the cost of like three Milwaukee drills. I mean, that's with batteries included. But uh, enough about that. We'll get back into unboxing this thing and going through a review on it. All right, so I went through that on just time lapse because there's nothing really special. Good old Chinese packaging, smells like crap. That's what it is. It was nice to see that it actually is kind of oiled, uh, even though it's that really smelly, gunky stuff that nobody really likes. But I'll bring you in closer here, and we'll start kind of a hands-on. Right. So first things first, uh, one wearing gloves is kind of cold out, but uh, I do like. I noticed right away. It's got a sliding blade guard. Uh, a lot of the older ones, I had a Bauer one of these, the corded versions, and which was fine. It actually works pretty good. A rafter hook there. Uh, it has one you have to adjust manually with a Allen key, which is yeah, is what it is. Usually you just kind of set and forget. I don't ever really adjust it in or adjust it out. I've never really needed that, but it uh, seems to work really good. And then on the back side... around here set it up like that I noticed get this in frame a little better uh, it's got these kind of like slide blade covers yeah they just kind of pop out of the way it's kind of nice got that one kind of nice uh, it's got a nice brush here for cleaning off on your drive wheel idler wheel doesn't have a brush either but that's neither here nor there Looks like easily replaceable bearings, guide bearings, and one you don't always see on some of these is a top roller bearing there. Some of them don't even have that. They just kind of have like a guide bushing or something to wear it on there. As far as it goes, the feel-wise, the rubber tires do feel good. They've got good traction. I do like the idea of the brush. Uh, there's an LED in here, which I think is nice. We'll see how that works out. But otherwise, I do like that, you know, it's got a good feel to it. Uh, kind of plastic on these exteriors, which is, you know, you take it for what it is. It's a $130 tool. Your nearest competitor, even like Milwaukee or DeWalt, is going to be almost $300. Bucks. So take it for what it is. Uh, let's pop a blade in here, and we'll actually dig on test drive and go cutting. One thing, they did not include a blade with this at all. Uh, I know a lot of them, even like Milwaukee's and DeWalt's, hell, even other cheap ones that you get on like Amazon or eBay or wherever, come with a blade. Even if it's just a chintzy cheap one. These ones did not, not a blade and nothing. But the blades that you do buy, I thought that was kind of handy. Made in the USA, uh, never actually used these before. So most of the ones I get are either Milwaukee or I'll get a DeWalt brand. So I'm kind of interested to see how these stand up. But obviously 18 TPI, you know, stainless steel, angle iron, pipe tubing, plastics, wood. All your basic stuff, we'll uh, slide a blade in here. It actually wasn't expensive either. 15 for two of them, which is pretty decent in my opinion for uh, USA made blades. 
if they're any good. But we'll pop a blade in here and I will set up some junk on the table and we'll cut some junk. One thing they do tell you, and I am curious to see, it says you have to have a five amp hour battery or larger. I'm curious if you could still use a two and a half. I don't know, I mean, you just lose capacity as far as how long you can run, but I've got a five amp hour on the charger right now. So we'll do it with what they recommend and see what happens. Let's try some two by two. Our, uh... Oh, trailer stock. Just that blade dirt out a little bit. question on it is they'll tell you you can only use like a five amp hour or bigger well i have a two and a half amp hour which i'm covering the thing up on there we go we're gonna shove that on there it's not quite fully charged and uh it's kind of cold let's give her a shot great including knocking crap off my uh french fries so woo anyways that just proves it you don't necessarily have to have a five amp hour say your five amp hour is charging and all you have left is two and a half or whatever speaking of charging a five amp hour battery i'm gonna throw that one on the wall so with that two final impressions um it's definitely not super duper heavy, but it's heavy enough built that it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart in your hands. 
I'm not really a big fan on the plastic guides on the back. Um, I don't know, I feel like you could get stuff packed up underneath there. The variable speed works really well. Uh, and the trigger itself is variable speed. So you can actually just leave it at six and kind of feather it as you need, which is real handy. I'm not super duper thrilled on the plastic hanger. Probably not the end of the world. But you know what, at the end of the day, uh, the biggest thing I like about them is the five-year warranty. I really do enjoy that uh, Harbor Freight's come out with stuff to kind of compete. I like the LED light, which actually just went off. It's really bright. You can definitely see your cut marks, and it actually leaves a shadow right underneath the blade where you're going to cut, which is really nice for kind of seeing what you're doing. Still can't cut straight, though, but that's a skill issue on my part. I'm not really good at it. Then again, too, this is not really my first cut band saw. But kind of for first portable one, first one that I'm going to try and use more than others. Um, I like the front handle, the big beefy handle. I know a lot of Milwaukee's will use just kind of like this weird grab handle top deal. I kind of like the D handle style. I feel like that's subjective and it's personal preference. Otherwise, uh, quality of the tool is great. I don't see any reason why this won't last me five years. I don't know if I'd put it up as high as Milwaukee, but. Again, I've been really impressed with a lot of the stuff that Harbor Freight's been putting out as far as like an alternative. I like the fact, you know, you can use a two and a half amp hour battery if you need it. Um, I like the variable speed trigger. That's really nice. I do like the adjustable blade guide or toolless adjust, I guess, be the right word. That's pretty handy. Although again, I'm still kind of an idiot and can't quite use a blade guide to save my life. So what do you do? The cuts are smooth, the cuts are clean. Um, the blades themselves, I did find out doing this, I was gonna try and cut some hex shaft that I had that was hardened. It does not do hardened shafts very well. Other than that, I mean, anything mild steel, it just buzzed right through. I didn't really have any issues. I don't really have a whole lot of stainless. I'm sure it'll do fine in stainless and it might gum up a little in aluminum, a lot of stuff does, but if you just coat crap in WD-40, it works great, power right through. Otherwise, no major complaints. Uh, like I said, a couple small things, but I'd go get you one. At the price point of 130 bucks, plus, I mean, you'll be in it if you don't have batteries and blade. The blades were 15 bucks for two of them, which I think is still actually a really great deal. You're in the thing 150 bucks, and you've got a phenomenal, you know, I don't know if I'd say industrial quality, but... Definitely, it's it's five-year warranty, so if you break it, you get a new one. whoop de doo You can't beat that. The warranty these days is everything, and Harbor Freight has always been pretty good about standing by what they put out. I'd definitely look into one if you need one. Um, definitely for a home shop or, you know, home hobbyist stuff or even light business stuff like I do. These things stand up well. Uh, I've been using the drills and the drivers and cordless angle grinders for almost four or five months now and have nothing bad to say about them. I've used them on quite a few jobs. Uh, they take quite the licking and keep on ticking. So if you're looking for a deep cut cordless bandsaw and you don't want to spend the three or $400 it's going to take to get into a DeWalt or Milwaukee, get you one of these.